Powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Boeing says it's moving forward with software updates on its 737 MAX jets. I'm Laura Podesta. I'll tell you about the contentious day of hearings on Capitol Hill, including new pressure on the FAA. I'm Emma Hamilton reporting in Bozeman, where we now have a Medal of Honor hero. And welcome to your Thursday. It is 630. I'm Missy O'Malley with Chet Lehman. And our top story for you here, Boeing is moving forward with fixes to the 737 MAX airplanes, which would have been grounded worldwide since the Ethiopian Airlines crash that killed 157 people. But at a hearing with the FAA and other transportation officials, lawmakers on Capitol Hill questioned the cozy relationship airlines have had with regulators. CBS's Laura Podesta is in New York this morning with the details. Safety is at the core of everything that we do. Boeing says it has complete confidence in its 737 MAX airplanes. We're working with customers and regulators around the world to restore faith in our industry. Two deadly crashes in the past six months grounded the planes worldwide. An anti-stall system is suspected of playing a role in both crashes. Yesterday, 200 pilots and airline personnel met at Boeing headquarters near Seattle to learn about software changes and a new training program for pilots. To get their input and to earn their, their trust. Are they too cozy? In Washington, D.C., lawmakers expressed deep concern over the relationship between the airline industry and government regulators. Overconfidence breeds complacency. The FAA decided to do safety on the cheap which is neither cheap nor safe. Acting FAA Administrator Dan Elwell defended the practice of relying on manufacturers like Boeing to help certify their own planes. We make sure that they are experts in the field, that they have uh, the appropriate understanding of FAA regs and manuals, they have uh, professional integrity is checked, everything. But transportation officials acknowledged their credibility needs to be restored. Confidence in FAA as the gold standard for aviation safety has been shaken. The FAA promised not to rush the 737 MAX back into service. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Now Laura tells us Elwell was light on details when pressed by senators about what changes it would make in the certification process. He did say it would cost the FAA $1.8 billion and require 10,000 additional employees. Wow. No relation. I was, gonna, yeah, I was just going <laughs> to. I was just going to say that too. And a yeah, fairly unusual name. Know, and yeah. yeah, no relation. No. Uh, we are dealing with some usual weather for Montana in the spring. Ugly out there right it now. Is, I'm uh, glad I don't have to go on the patio. Seeing some snow. <laughs> yeah, I do. That's how that works. <laughs> nice Temperatures guy. into the 30s this morning. We are seeing scattered snow showers as we're uh, looking across the area. There's a little bit of wind, so visibility may be down as well. So keep that in mind. We may start to see some roads uh, get a little on the slick side at times this morning, both east and west of the divide. We'll talk about how this day is going to shape up and what your weekend looks like. We'll, of course, talk more about that from the... Uh, Billion Auto Weather Patio in just a few minutes. Thank you for that, Matt. It is now 633 and a fantastic story for you here. The Bozeman community is remembering Sergeant Travis Atkins, a kind-hearted man who would do anything for anyone. A Medal of Honor award that Atkins received yesterday at the White House is the most prestigious award in the military and one that's not awarded very often. Uh, Sergeant Atkins is the third Montana-born uh, recipient of the award, 10th overall in Montana. Now, many in Gallatin Valley told MTN News that they aren't surprised that Travis gave his life to others or for others. That's the type of person he was. MTN's Emma Hamilton caught up with one of his childhood friends who says Atkins was a hero even before he joined the Army. It's, uh, it's something that uh, I can't really uh, put into words. It's something that's surreal, and I still, I still haven't fully accepted it yet. He was a very strong-willed, uh, took a lot of risks that I wouldn't take in my lifetime. And, uh, but the biggest thing is he had a big heart. Uh, he really cared about who we, are, who we are. As a kid growing up with a hearing loss, that was, made it really easy for me to be able to become friends with Travis because it was tough for me to be able to go make new friends, but Travis had no problem. He didn't see the handicap. He saw me as a person. Having Atkins as a friend meant more to Krogstead than Atkins ever knew. 
Since the third grade, up until the time Atkins deployed the first and second time, they were the best of friends. I'm not surprised that he went back. I'm proud that he went back because that's where he belonged. You can't, there's an impact that you can make on life that you can only make on a battlefield, and that's where he belonged. He belonged out there, and that's what I think that's what he truly believed. With tears in his eyes, Krogstad reflects on their friendship and the time they spent in the mountains together. But it's an emotional roller coaster, losing a friend that he is just so proud of for his actions. It's an emotion that you can't describe. Uh, there's a there's pride and there's sadness. Um, you feel sad for the Atkins family and what they've had to go through. Um, but there's pride. Local veterans are also honored to have one of their own become a Medal of Honor hero. I just know that I am proud of him. I don't, I've never met Travis and I don't know him. I just know that I am so proud that he was an Army guy just like me. And uh, so we're brothers. But he did it saving other guys in his platoon. And that's what makes a big difference. He didn't just do it for himself, he did it for country, for God, and saving his guys. Even though Travis is here at the Veterans Cemetery in Bozeman, his sacrifice and bravery shines across the entire country. And while he is a true American hero, he's also a hero for the Gallatin Valley. Reporting in Bozeman, Emma Hamilton, MTN News. Uh, 636. The community plans to welcome home the Atkins family on Friday afternoon on Airway Boulevard a little after 3 p.m. Anyone is interested and encouraged to take part are all are welcome. Very fantastic. I love that. And three people were wounded in Butte on Tuesday night after they were attacked by a man with a knife who is still on the run from police. MTN's John Amy has our latest on this ongoing investigation. Butte police are looking for a man suspected of stabbing three people during a disturbance in the parking lot of an uptown convenience store late Tuesday. Butte police claim a man in a white car began harassing two men from Anaconda as they were walking into the store. He continued yelling at the men and challenging them as they left the store and then a fight ensued. The clerk from the store then uh, went out to the parking lot to break it up. He was subsequent, subsequently stabbed, as was two of the uh, two other victims. The man with the knife ran from the scene, and a woman who was in the suspect's car drove away south on Montana Street, leaving the three wounded men in the parking lot. They took themselves to the hospital or had someone else drive them to the hospital. We were able to speak with them at the hospital. Uh, they were treated and then released. Police were still investigating the incident Wednesday. Reviewing videos uh, from the parking lot and videos from the store and casino. Investigators still do not know why the suspect targeted the victims in this violent attack. Uh, they went to the store. Uh, this guy began harassing them. They did not know who the person was. Uh, that's their statement to us. Uh, so we have no idea right now uh, what we're dealing with or why this male may have challenges to the fight. Now police described the suspect as a white male about five foot ten inches tall and about 150 pounds and wearing a black jacket at the time. In Butte, John Amy, MTN News. Now police say all three victims have been treated from the hospital and released. Uh, in court news this morning, a Belgrade man facing charges after police say they found more than 50 marijuana plants and bundles of packaged marijuana in his house and say he was selling it without a license. James Marazzo was, uh, made an appearance in Gallatin County Court after investigators say they found more than 30 pounds of packaged marijuana, equipment for making marijuana resin, and uh, business cards at his home. Medical marijuana program inspector told Belgrade police that Marazzo was processing marijuana and had contacted her office to ask about obtaining a provider license. When officers searched his home, they found a growing operation throughout the building and on the outline of a business plan, Marazzo's bail set at $10,000. And here's a good one for you. A student at Sacagawea Middle School in Bozeman just got back from re reporting at a gig for the Kids' Choice Awards in Los Angeles. She's going to take our job. 13-year-old Ruby West is a reporter for Time for Kids and writes articles for the nationally published magazine. 
She was able to interview Nickelodeon celebrities all of last week on her spring break. Ruby says she enjoys being a journalist. Well, I love asking questions to people. Like, I just like, I'm curious, very curious. And um, uh, reporting just gave me an excuse to just go up to people and ask questions, and it's really cool. I think that's a pretty good that's policy awesome, on that. Now, Ruby <laughs> says when she grows up, she'd like to be a journalist, a surgeon, and an astronaut. And on Monday morning, we have Ruby live with us here on The Morning Show. She's, of course, also planning a food drive for the middle school. And because she was working in Nickelodeon, she got slimed, it looks like, I too. That's the best that. part ever. So I love good that. for her. Bright young lady. Absolutely. We must take a quick break. In just a moment, a traditional book or an e-book? What's the best to read to your kiddo? That story for you in just a moment. But first, we're going to check in with Bianca Goladriga to see what's coming up at 7 o'clock on CBS This Morning. Good morning. Ahead on CBS This Morning, Boeing promises fixes and additional training for pilots of 737 MAX planes. Hear from one airline 737 fleet captain about the proposed changes. And only on CBS This Morning, how the Army is using video games and esports to recruit the next generation of soldiers. See you at 7.